That was the movie 2012, a fictional account of what could happen if the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted. Now, some people have cons been concerned about this possibility for years and what it could mean for the United States. But a new study shows that it's even less likely than we thought. Scientists have discovered a magma cap that plays a role in preventing a mass eruption under one of the most popular national parks in the United States. For more on this, we have Michael Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Michael, thank you so much for meeting with us My today. Pleasure. Now, let's talk first about the study. How exactly does this magma cap reduce the risk of a major explosion? Well, what these scientists found is they, they were bouncing uh, earthquake waves off of the top of the magma chamber, and that can tell you something about the characteristics of the top. And they found the top was full of bubbles. Now, on the surface, that might seem a little concerning because those bubbles might indicate that pressure could be increasing. But the key was they didn't find that many bubbles. And in fact, the gases that are coming out of Yellowstone that we can measure at places like Old Faithful and Mud Volcano, those have magmatic composition. So the whole system together seems to be very efficiently moving these bubbles up to the surface. So no pressure is actually building. This cap is sort of allowing bubbles to accumulate and then get transferred up to the surface. How big of a deal is a discovery like this? Does this represent a big shift in what we know about Yellowstone? I, I, it doesn't so much represent a shift about what we know about Yellowstone. I think the real take-home message is that we can even see this in the first place. I mean, this is incredible that we have the resolution now to be able to use seismic imaging techniques. It's sort of like taking an, an MRI of the Earth. And we can see this, you know, few hundred foot thick cap to the Yellowstone Magma Reservoir that's over two miles deep. Um, I think that says a lot about our ability to see into the earth. And this same technique, you know, now that it's been tested out at a place like Yellowstone, might be applied in other places, and it could potentially tell us, you know, whether or not we might expect eruptions in other volcanoes. An MRI of the earth, I love that. But I, I have to ask, when it comes to the Hollywood movies about these supervolcanoes, you know, what might happen if Yellowstone were to actually erupt? Is Hollywood well, right? You know, the, the, the 2012 images, you know, the whole thing just exploding. That's not really how Yellowstone normally works. The vast majority of eruptions at Yellowstone are lava flows. In fact, if you sort of look around, uh, if you're standing at Old Faithful, you look all the way around you, you see sort of high topography, cliffs and, and hills. And those are all lava flows that erupted since the last really massive explosion at Yellowstone. And that's the most common form of volcanic activity. Even that isn't that common. The last lava flow erupted about 70,000 years ago. Far more common on human time scales in the region are hydrothermal explosions. There's sort of really, really energetic geyser eruptions that can throw rocks. There was a, a really uh, well-imaged one back in July of last year. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Also strong earthquakes. Uh, there was a magnitude seven there in 1959. It's still the largest earthquake ever recorded in the Intermountain West. Those are the most likely kind of hazards, geologic hazards in the region. Lava flow would be the most likely form of eruption, but even that's not particularly common. So when people hear the word volcano, they often think big mountain. You're picturing like the Hawaiian volcanoes, but that is not what you see for people who go to Yellowstone. So can you kind of explain what is, you know, why it's the lack of a mountain and what's a better term for almost this underground volcano? Yeah, so Yellowstone, you know, most people would expect sort of a, a pointy mountain um, or at least a very broad mountain, and, and that's not there. Another thing people might expect to see when they come to Yellowstone is a great big hole in the ground because it's a caldera, right? This is a place where there was a huge eruption. The ground collapsed in on itself. Uh, but that isn't visible either because the hole that formed about 631,000 years ago when the, when the big explosion happened, that's been mostly filled by these post-eruption lava flows, and also sediments from glaciers and lakes and so forth. Um, so there was never a really big mountain there. There was a hole at one time, but it's mostly been filled. You really can think of it more of like a field of volcanic products where there's volcanic uh, evidence of volcanic eruption sort of all over the place. Um, it's, it's far, far bigger than a, than a single mountain. The scale of it is, is sort of hard to wrap your, wrap your mind around. Interesting. You would think of the mountain being the bigger version of that. So with this newly discovered magma cap in mind, what are the chances of a major eruption at Yellowstone? Well, pretty small. Uh, we just don't see enough molten material down there. Um, all of these studies, uh, whether they've been seismic or electromagnetic, there's a whole bunch of studies that have come out in the last decade or so that have looked at 
the content of the magma chamber. And even though we, we, when you talk about a magma chamber, when you draw a picture of it, it's typically kind of like a red balloon, you know, beneath the ground, right? And that implies that it's just this cauldron that's full of boiling molten rock. That's not really what a magma chamber is. These magma chambers are complex mixtures of some melt, a lot of solid particles that sort of bind up the, the, the melt part, some, some gases. And this study, I think, does a really nice job of laying out just what it looks like. The gases are sort of accumulated at the top and they're efficiently being transferred up to the surface. And the main part of the magma chamber is it's mostly solid. There's a little bit of melt in between crystals that have, have come out of the magma. They sort of crystallized, precipitated out of the magma. And there just isn't enough mobile magma down there, nor, nor pressure, to really build up to, to form an eruption. That might change in the future. We might have some sort of rejuvenation event. But it's the sort of thing that would take a while. You'd have to remelt a bunch of that magma that's sort of stagnant in, in the reservoir right now. And it would take a while. It would take a while and we'd see unmistakable signs of that in terms of earthquake activity and ground deformation, gas emissions, thermal emissions. It, it would be something that would be pretty hard to miss. And we're not seeing any signs of that at this point. So with the risk being so slim, why do you think people are so fascinated with the volcano under Yellowstone erupting? Uh, I think, I, I don't know, I mean, it, like, like the, the, the movie clip showed, right, it's sort of a fantastic thing. It did happen in the past. There were some massive explosions. Um, there's a whole line of massive explosions that sort of stretch across Idaho that mark the trail that this volcanic system made as the North American plate moved over the top of this big, hot thermal system. Uh, and it, it's caused some, some, I mean, the eruptions are, are epically big when they have happened. You know, there's uh, ash fall fossil beds in Nebraska where you can find all of these really interesting prehistoric animals that were killed by ash from Yellowstone. So I, I think it's, it's really captures your imagination. And even if it's not something that's likely to happen anytime soon, I mean, we can see the evidence. There's really nothing down there that can, can erupt anytime soon. It's still sort of a fantastic thing to imagine. And you get to go to Yellowstone, you get to see the evidence, not only of the past eruptions, but also the fact that there's a heat engine that's still down there. I mean, there's 500 geysers in Yellowstone, about half the geysers in the world shooting boiling water out of the ground with some regularity are right there in Yellowstone. It's, it, it's an easy thing to capture your imagination and imagine sort of, you know, what's going on beneath your feet. <laughs> Michael Poland, scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.